If you guys have not seen my original video on Cody Co. in Tana, I just want to clarify because some of y'all in the comments, and I assume you just don't know my content, thought I was defending Cody. Bros, I'm not defending a 25 year old who had sex with a 17 year old, okay? I am never going to defend a grown up having sex with a minor. And I don't even know how you got that from my video. So my content, if you guys are new to it, is about dissecting behavior to understand how we got there in the first place because your girl is looking for solutions. And there obviously is a stereotype of the 17 with the 25 year old for a reason. I don't know where you grew up, but I had at least three or four girlfriends in this age gap relationship and their parents knew. Something is in the water in which culture has allowed this to become normalized. And we have to talk about how to change the normal. And in order to change the normal, you have to know why we got there in the first place. Now, generally speaking, it's quite frowned upon a 25 and a 17 year old. But I've talked about this, how it's in media, how in Pineapple Express, he's in his 20s dating a high schooler. How, yeah, people definitely raise an eyebrow and they think it's weird, but it still happens. So we need to have conversations about why these things occur, right? I even said in my original video that Tana is an imperfect victim, but still a victim. It doesn't matter if she's imperfect, she's still a victim. And Cody, regardless of how his branding has made him sweet and relatable, is somebody who is old enough to know better. So I don't know how from my original content, anyone would have, anyone would have come to the conclusion that I thought Cody was in the right, but Cody's obviously in the wrong. With that said, let's watch D'Angelo cook Cody because bro, I've already seen some spoiler clips from this and Cody's cooked, bro. All right, Cody, let's have an uncomfortable conversation. Someone has been alleging for years now that you, one of the largest commentary creators on YouTube- Yo, I can't believe Cody's up to 6 million and also shout out to D'Angelo because like this aesthetic is on point knowingly committed a crime against her when she was a minor, but YouTubers and viewers alike are ignoring and discrediting these allegations solely because the person making them happens to be an unlikable woman online. Which I mentioned in my original video that even though she's an imperfect victim, she's still a victim. Tana Mojo. And you know that people are ignoring this because nobody is working harder to bury this story than you. And you're getting away with it because commentary YouTube has a serious problem. I can't blame any of your viewers or my viewers for not hearing about this because you've done such a good job hiding it up until now that I only found out about it recently. The situation has been talked about by smaller channels, it's been discussed at length on other platforms, and it keeps almost hitting the mainstream, like with this Rolling Stone article or this H3 podcast discussion. But the reason it hasn't caught on yet, despite all of this, is that none of your friends I think everyone is discounting something that my content is supposed to make more, like um, people aware of. This is normal in some places. And if you have a problem with it being normal, you got to understand why it's normal in the first place. For lots of people, they wouldn't even think that this is weird. And that's where society is in some places. So I'm not surprised it didn't get picked up by the mainstream media if relationships with this age gap were in our literal movies 10 years ago. Like, I think you guys, maybe because I'm a millennial, this was a normal age gap dynamic in media, in actual Hollywood movies. So of course people aren't right away going to think it's weird because they're not processing it as out of the normal, which is the difference between a predator who knows like they're doing something wrong and targeting people, right? And people that are just like moving within culture. Right. And I think this is like very different. And I think that that's what my, again, my content is meant to show you bubbles and why these nuances exist within bubbles. And I, like you, would love to see 17 year olds date other 17 year olds instead of people who are in the adult age. Absolutely. But why are 17 year olds and 25 year olds even dating in the first place? And why do parents know about it and they're not stopping it. That's a conversation I don't think people are ready to have. So I'm not surprised that this didn't go viral yet, but I'm excited that it did because it means an opportunity to stop a generational curse. I am happy we're talking about it because ultimately like Cody should have known better. He was eight years older than Tana and Tana wasn't responsible for knowing better. She was 17. And nobody on your level, nobody in the commentary niche with enough pull is willing to admit that this situation makes you look terrible mm -hmm. a lot of people like him a lot and they really are like doing any kind of mental yeah. gymnastic to just ignore it i'm not here to accuse you of committing a crime in this video because i can't do that based on someone else's allegations nobody can definitively take these allegations as proof but at the same time they should still be looked at and not treated as an open secret and swept under the rug like you've been doing for so many years now and from the way the situation keeps popping up more and more often it's clear that there's only so much rug sweeping you can do before people start taking a closer 
closer look at things. So let's take a closer look. We both know that Tana Mojo is a YouTube personality with a history of lies, controversy, and genuinely problematic behavior that's become so entangled with her brand that her podcast is called Cancelled with Tana Mojo. And speaking of this podcast, about a month ago, she hosted a live episode in front of an audience, and the conversation turned to you. Who's the smallest you've ever had sex with? Oh my god, do no one look at me, Cody Co. I can say that. This clip started making the rounds and people were understandably perturbed because if Tana Mojo was 17, you would have been 25. So people started speculating and Tana decided to set the record straight. I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. She claims that not only were you fully aware of her age at the time, but someone even tried to stop you and you went ahead anyway. There was a situation with mm. Gabby Hanna at a playlist live where she pulled him aside and told him like, yo, she's 17. And then we still went and hooked up. To be clear, 17 is under the age of consent in many states, including Florida, where Playlist Live used to take place. I think what's so horrible about the situation, and I hope he plays the clip of Gabby saying it, is that, like, somebody came and warned you. Why did you keep doing it? Like, that's the part that's crazy. Is like, you knew. Like, Gabby told you. So then I want to know why he did it. Like, that's the part of, like, how am I supposed to break this pattern in people if I don't know why you do it? And simplifying it like the internet wants to, like, oh, he's just a predator. I'm so sorry, guys. Be serious. Millions of people on this planet, culturally speaking, cannot all be predators. That is not, that it makes any, that it makes zero sense for how humans socialize. They cannot all be predators. There is a pattern and people are following the pattern. We need to know why that's happening in order to stop it. So something is going on in culture that even encourages parents to pair their kids up with partners with huge age gaps. Why are we doing this to our children? These parents can't all be predators, guys. Yes, predatory behavior is rampant in our communities, but there's got to be something more to this. So I want to know why. That's what my work is obsessed with. Why? Why do you do this? Because the simple brain dead answer of like, he's a predator. Yes, in some circumstances, 1000%. And maybe that is the right answer for Cody Co. But if it's not, then we need to examine it to break the generational curse, period. So this means that Tana Mojo is accusing you of statutory rape, and she's not trying to hide that. This Ooh. isn't just some crazy tea. It was a crime. Nothing would make this- Katana calling it a crime is a huge change in the story, right? That's a huge deal. And Cody Coe's Canadian, so if he gets a felony charge for this, he's probably going to get deported, right? Is he? Does anyone know if he's a U.S. citizen? Because I know Kelsey is, right? So they have a kid, and if he is a felon, doesn't he get deported? Isn't that how it works? And I don't know if he'd serve time for it, too, but the fact that he was warned, there was a witness, somebody told him, and he went for it anyways? Girl. The situation better, but plenty of things make it worse, like the fact that she was a fan of yours at the time, adding an additional layer to the power dynamic. Well, wasn't she a very prominent content creator? I think adding the fan element could be an element. And I definitely think that plays a huge role, which is why groupie communities aren't my favorite. Like groupie bubbles aren't my favorite because I think a lot of uh, band members and people in like positions of power take advantage of a lot of people. But I also want people to have the right to be fans of people and to have sex with people. But since Tana was 17, I think that is what matters the most. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it should be illegal for fans to have sex with people they are fans of, but I think Tana being 17 is kind of the point here. It doesn't matter if she was a fan or a content creator, she was still a minor. Which brings me to another conversation we're not having. Maybe we shouldn't let minors on the internet. I really don't think minors should be content creators like that. But then Tana was coming from an abusive household and I think the only way she sought freedom was to be a content creator. So there's something like there's, we gotta have a, there's a much bigger conversation to be had. Dynamic you would have had over her. I grew up loving him and I think I, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. was just like excited and a fan. Tana seems to have many feelings about this, which we'll go over a bit later, but she stated very clearly that the actions she's accusing you of are inexcusable. If I had a 17 year old daughter mm. or a little sister or something, mm -hmm. like I would kill. I would never let it fly. These recent allegations are bad enough on their own, but there are a couple of things. Cognitive says, how old are they now? Oh, get this. Tana is officially 25. Eight years after this happened to her, she is now the age he was when they had sex, just to put it into perspective. And so Cody's like, what, 30... I can't do math, 32, but he's older now, okay? He's older. Things that make them worse still. Things that many people don't know yet, but you do. You know that Tana has been making the same specific claim against you for years Ooh, now. Girl. Here she is back in 2021 saying the same thing. I was 17 at the time, 18. I started kind of hooking up with other people. Shout out JC Kalen, shout out Cody Co. But what lends mm. the most credibility to Tana's claims and what is really the most damning thing for you, Cody, is a clip that you might not have oh. even seen yet. See. 
I read the Rolling Stone article, I watched the YouTube videos about this, and they all missed something. And I understand why. The clip I'm about to show you is extremely hard to find. The original has been lost to time, and it's a wonder we have this on video at all. Actually, wait, we should look it up because Cognitive brought up the statutes of limitations. Like, California doesn't have one. So if this happened in Cali, he would have still been held accountable. But since it happened in Florida, I will Google while you watch this next clip that shook me to my core when I watched it. Because this changes, like, this is such a big perspective. This next clip, I have a feeling it's the Gabby clip, right? Is a huge tr perspective change. All. But if there was anything to give me any more clarity about these allegations before I formed my opinion, I was going to find it. Remember how Tana said that fellow YouTuber Gabby Hanna tried to stop you before everything allegedly went down? Well, did you know that Gabby is actually on record telling the exact same story several years ago? One time, I told a guy, I saw him making out with a girl at a party yeah. who was underage, and I pulled him aside and I was like, Hey man, you probably don't know. I know she like looks a little older. She's underage. Watch it. And he's like, oh my God, thank you for telling me. And then he turned that. This is really, really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. According to the really quick Google search, uh, I'm getting a couple of different things. Statues of limitations within three years, within eight years of the victim's 18th birthday. Uh, Florida law provides an eight-year limitation of prosecuting for first-degree felony sexual battery when the victim is 16. Quick Google search says three years. That sucks. That kind of sucks. Hmm. Ooh, that kind of sucks. See, California doesn't have a statute of limitation. That's interesting. Damn, that sucks. So could you imagine, like, that's what I mean to say, like, okay, there's a reason this is happening, but also what were you thinking? They told you, they warned you. It's one thing if you kind of don't know, or if it's one thing if like, but the fact that somebody even warned you like, hey, just a heads up, like she's a minor and you went, mm, still a good decision, bro, bro, you're either, I'm sorry, IQ 25 or some, we need to study this. I think we should study this. I think there are too many weird grown ass men that like teenage girls and we need to study why this is and we need to do it with an actual desire to know the answer because that is the only way you stop generational curses. That is the only way you heal a community is you figure out why is this happening in the first place? Is it something we can teach people not to do? Is it something that's like you're born with it? Are you like, what is the, what is the complex around grownups being interested in teenagers? What is that? What is the problem? Why are you doing this? Okay. Like what is happening? Kay says in all caps, he thanked her for warning him. He thanked her. And then he did it anyways. It's like, ew, ew, what? That's crazy. That is a crazy decision to make. That is a crazy decision to make. People make accusations all the time, specifically regarding things that are very difficult to prove or disprove, unfortunate as that may be. But when somebody makes an allegation and they say they have a witness and that witness can be found telling the exact same story years before any of this came out, that's not something I can just ignore. In a situation that cannot be proven, corroboration by a third party goes a long way. And frankly, Cody, the allegations against you seem to have been corroborated. But instead of researching to find these answers like I did, many of your fans seem far more interested in attacking your accuser. I have seen so many comments, but what was she wearing? It's it's Tana, so who cares? Well, it's Tana Mojo. The reaction to this has been unsurprising, but incredibly disappointing. Demanding proof that they know she can't provide, acting like she's only doing this to gain clout or ruin you somehow, despite the fact that she's never once put your name in a video title over this. Or worst of all, implying that a 17-year-old could have truly consented to any of this. But let's be clear about one thing. That is not the case. No amount of retroactive age calculation. Okay, look, we have to be honest. The age of consent is a construct and some people want to make it 21, right? So like the age of consent is a construct, right? And I, I don't think we need to raise it much higher, but I, I'm not really that opposed either, but I don't think we need to, but I do think we should have larger conversations because look guys, even if she was 18, it's still fucking gross. Okay. I'll take an even like a, a, a stance that other people don't even have. I think even if she was 18, and I said this in my original video, I think it's gross. 
It's not about her being a kid or it being legal or illegal. It's about it being immoral. And I know morals are subjective. I don't believe in objective morality either. But personally, and I did say this in my original video, I think 18 and 25 is fucking weird. And I think that, oh, just because it's legal is a weak moral excuse to have sex with somebody who's in, who basically was just in high school and you're way out of college. So that's how I think about it. An 18 year old is just out of high school and a 25 year old is out of high school, out of college and three years into their career. Just think about the differences there. Yes, it's legal, but is it moral? Again, the legality of it, we need to put a line in the sand of what an adult is. Okay. I'm fine. I'll take the hit. Fine. We'll put it in the sands. 18. Cool. Why are you doing it? Are you admitting out loud that like your maturity level is that of an 18 year old or are you a predator taking advantage? Because it's got to be one of those two or maybe there's something more nuanced here I'm not seeing, but hello. And I don't want to hear anybody in my comments like maybe the 25 year old and the 18 year old are having a real connection. Yeah. But don't you think it's weird that a 25 year old is connecting with an 18 year old? Why are you so stunted? Okay. Why are you so stunted? Ever thought about that? or what if scenarios change the fact that what Tana described would be, objectively speaking, a crime. A crime which mm -hmm. you've said absolutely nothing about. And even if this was- That's true. Objectively within the law, it is a crime. So you better figure that the fuck out. Isn't illegal. You remember being 25. You would have known then, as I currently know at age 25, that nobody this age should need an explanation for why a 17 year old is off limits. Because you remember being 17 too. Now, thankfully, Tana's personal experience with this isn't one of trauma. In fact, I've seen people defending you by saying. I've seen, I will say this. I will say that even though this particular instance didn't feel like more trauma, I do think Tana is traumatized, right? She's talked about her upbringing. And I think her trauma leads, trauma leads to and can lead to, okay, this is gonna sound like victim blaming and I don't want it to. So fuck off if you think it is. When we think so low of ourselves, we think what's one more person who can take advantage of us? So young people who experience a certain type of trauma allow older people, and I mean allow very loosely here, to take advantage of them because they feel so worthless, which is why it's fucking disgusting when an older person takes advantage of a traumatized person because that's what's happening. You're letting an already vulnerable person be more vulnerable. It's like a cat with a wound on its belly and it exposes itself to you because how much more worse can it get? And you take advantage and you kill the cat. It's like, what are you doing? The reason the older person is held accountable is because the older person should have the maturity and wisdom, which Cody Co obviously didn't have, to say, Tana, you're a child. Also, even if she was 18, you're a young person with a lot of fucking trauma. You don't need to have sex. We need to get you help. But of course, that's not what happens. And that's why I say this is a societal issue. We're not training people to see vulnerability in people. We're not training men or women or non-binary people to realize having sex with the 18 year old is a combination of taking advantage of the vulnerable and some other things mixed in there. Like again, you know how critical I am against age gap relationships. You know, people think I'm too prudish for this. And I'm trying to say the reason it makes me uncomfortable is because often younger people are only having sex with older people because of the trauma, not because they even want to, but because they, they're they seeking validation or seeking something from repairing their childhood. Not always, 8 billion people on the planet, so not always, but sometimes, and a lot of the time. Again, I don't know how anyone watched my original video and thought I would ever be defending an adult who took advantage of a teenager. That's not what I'm doing. In order to actually solve these problems, you gotta know why people are doing it in the first place. And I don't think society educates its people, obviously. Would you think, would you say society is educated on mental health? Or do you think we have a fucking problem? And we have a fucking problem because even our own parents don't know that these age gap relationships are dangerous to us. They encourage it sometimes. I want to stop the generational curses. So you got to know why people get there. And if people are trained this way, we have to have a conversation. Again, when you help marginalize communities and you wonder why 15 year olds are in prison, for like armed robbery, you got to know the system made it so that was likely to happen to them. The system, if we live in rape culture, is absolutely setting up men for failure. And men are learning these habits from society that encourages it. And then women are the victims of it. And more or less, parents don't even know there's a cycle happening. So they continue it without thinking. You know how many parents I knew that didn't think it was weird that an older man was dating their high school daughter? I don't care if it's normal. Is it healthy? I'm never here to make an excuse 
for a person who takes advantage of somebody, but there's a reason it's happening. And I don't think anyone's willing to take responsibility for it because they think it's all, oh, this one person did it. You think that one person is a reflection of a society at whole that is absolutely contributing to the continuation of culture? Come on, guys, Feminism 101. Tana said she doesn't care, so why should any of us care? But that's not exactly what she was saying. I don't associate or hold it with trauma because I am such a comparative person where I'm like, so many worse things have happened to me. And even if something isn't consciously internalized as an identifiable source of trauma, the body keeps the score. I know things manifest in ways other than me directly feeling them. Like maybe I don't yeah. feel traumatized in certain aspects from certain things and other things I do, but you know, maybe they just manifest in ways other than directly feeling. And look, I said this with Tom Fullery and I really wanna expand on this. I do think people can come out of singular situations and not be traumatized from them, but I think the fact that you're in that situation is the trauma. Do you get what I'm saying? Even if the situation itself isn't what traumatized you, the fact that you're in that situation in the first place is the sign of the trauma, possibly. I don't, look, I don't wanna go around saying everyone's traumatized because that invalidates people's stories, but I would say most of the world is traumatized. And I would say everybody experiences some form of trauma. And trauma is an impact. Trauma isn't PTSD or BPD or it, trauma is an impact. It's an impact of negativity and unhealthiness in your life that manifests in behavior and how you treat people. So I'm gonna be honest with you, Cody Coe's probably traumatized. It doesn't give him an excuse just because you're traumatized doesn't make it an excuse to hurt people, but we have to explain why this is happening because it isn't happening in a vacuum. It is happening in society. It's a societal problem. The answer to why any of us should care is that a person has tried to come forward about her experience and has been met with the most vitriolic victim blaming I've seen in years. She's been dismissed, discredited, and disbelieved before anybody ever gave her a chance because it's Tana, which sets a horrible precedent that if a person runs out of goodwill, they lose the right to come forward mm -hmm. with their experience. It's true. It is true. And that sucks. And that's why I say like imperfect victims are still victims. The most traumatizing thing of all of this really was seeing how many people like don't believe people or don't yeah. believe me. I feel so bad for all of these young girls because then they see that and then it makes them not want to come forward. And you, Cody, are part of the reason she's been met with this reaction. Your status as one of YouTube's golden boys has made it possible for you to ignore a situation that almost anyone else would have had to respond to by now. I know for a fact if you swapped out Cody Ko with someone that like people didn't like that much. Oh my I God. I would be receiving so much more. Well, that's the problem though. I don't think this is a positive or a negative. I think in the right circumstances, people earn reputations for a reason. And in the bad circumstances, people are criticized because of their reputations, which is unfair. So I think to be fair, people usually earn a reputation for a reason, good or bad. And I think that's why it is so shocking because Cody does have such a good brand. I mean, it was shocking for me. When I learned about Colby, I was like, what is happening? It felt like a huge bubble burst where I was like, hey, 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 what happened? And look, I unsubscribed from Cody. I can't watch him the same anymore. I'm totally ruined for it. But to be fair, and I think this is so important, the reason I didn't, and it wasn't enough for me to see like, an older guy be with a younger girl is because like I, I'm raised as a millennial. It was in media growing up. It's very common around the world. It's not a justification, but it is sort of normalized in a big way. And when you meet people who are doing things that you think are unhealthy, but they want to do it anyways, it's hard to tell people like you can't do things. Because look, I've been called a prude all my life when I'm like, don't do this. And they're like, don't tell me what to do. You know how many 17-year-olds? I've been like, do not engage with this person. This is an adult. Don't do this. And they're like, Brittany's just a prude. Listen, okay? I know why you're doing it, but I also think you should consider a different option. And the problem is, and I hate, and I don't think we're willing to admit this, humans are dumber than we think they are. And dumb people make a mess of the world. I really do think it's a it's almost a crime to be stupid, but also the whole world is built on stupidity, so it's fine. I think you are downplaying how uneducated people make really stupid decisions. It doesn't take away what they've done. I think Cody should still be considered a felon, and I think he might even need to face deportation. I am not saying that what Cody Co did because he was stupid, maybe, or a predator, maybe, exempts him from the consequences. I'm a little upset that Florida has a statute of limitations. So I wouldn't be upset if Cody Co got a felony charge for this, right? Because I'm like, hey, bro, one, you're not acknowledging it. 
Two, it's not like you've changed possibly. What if he hasn't changed? What if Cody's still a person who thinks, yeah, 25 and 17 is okay. We need to have conversations about why this is being normalized in culture and has been. And then we need to have conversations about why we're drawing the line in the sand anyways, because we're trying to protect children. And if we wanna protect kids, we all need to participate in that. And let me rephrase. If we want to protect young adults, so even if Tana was 18, we should be making this because of a moral decision. But then again, ethics of society are very complicated. But I would love to live in a culture where 25-year-olds didn't date 18-year-olds. I feel like 21 and 25 is reasonable, but that's it. If you're 25, you shouldn't be dating anyone 20, under 21, in my personal opinion. I know they're legal adults. I know, I know, I know. But I really don't think it's necessary. But at the same time, you're a legal adult at 18 and you can join the military. It feels really stupid to tell somebody who can fire a gun and kill people, hey, don't date this person. So look, this is not simple. And pretending like it's black and white and the solution is easy is just so lazy. It's so lazy, guys. Come on. Sympathy. I find your silence on the situation to be uncomfortable because I know that if Tana's allegations are true, then silence would be your only option, since telling the truth would be tantamount to confessing to a crime and lying would put you at risk of being contradicted by a witness. And like I told you at the beginning, I'm not accusing you of committing a crime, but even if what Tana says is false, your silence is still grossly incompetent at best. Mm -hmm. Why? It is, well, it's better for his brand. That's a problem. As a business move, it's always better not to talk about things like this. Like it would be insane as a business move to bring this attention to himself. But also as a community member, it's also insane not to talk about it. That's that's the disconnect. Remember that this is an internet bubble where we think regular people talk about their controversies. Like people in very big bubbles, guys, like doing very big things, they wouldn't talk about it. It would be bad for the brand because remember that a majority of Cody's audience isn't going to know what's going on. So why would he make them aware of it? Especially if it was or wasn't true. Why would he let his audience know what's happening? The only way his audience <clears throat> would even know what's happening is if they're in the streamer sphere or watching these kind of commentaries. Cody Co. is a much more normie commentary channel than even a D'Angelo or a me or a anybody else, right? So I don't know how people aren't realizing like there are so many reasonable reasons for Cody not to address this. But as a community, we would expect him to because, well, I don't know, we watch Penguin Zero and he would talk about it and we watch Sneeko and he would talk about it and we watch this person and they would talk about it. Cody's not in this bubble. Cody is in a very normal people bubble. He's not in the Sneeko bubble where you talk about cuckolding. As a community, I agree. I would love to see Cody talk about it and own up to it. As a business person, I don't know why he would admit to a felony. That would be a weird decision to make. And also if you're looking to like, even if you've changed, if you want to protect your family and your reputation against strangers on the internet, you know, I think it would be nice if Cody was sorry and he talked to Tana personally. What if Cody isn't sorry? Which would be just so icky. What if Cody isn't sorry? What if he didn't change? What if he's the same guy who thought it was reasonable? That's really what's gross here. Because I believe people can change. I believe in redemption. If I didn't, I well, what would be the point of ever advocating for people? I think the scary thing here is Cody might not be sorry. And Tana deserves a fucking apology. Not that I think anyone deserves anything, but if somebody deserves anything, I think it's the teenager you had sex with, sir. Why are you choosing the path that would be your only option if you were guilty? Now, some seem to think that you're not- No, I think D'Angelo's wrong with that. He's not choosing the only path if he was guilty. He's also choosing the only path if he was innocent. And I don't know how people don't know that. Like, it's such a bubble take to think Cody would ever want to address this. It is like, what are you talking about? If he was innocent, he wouldn't want to address it. Not obligated to speak up. And maybe that's what people around you are telling you as well. But from one creator to another, you absolutely have an obligation to, at the very least, call out the misogyny, the victim blaming, and all manner of cognitive dis- You forget, like, Cody's? might just be a ruthless business guy. Have we ever thought about that? What if Cody's just ruthlessly a business guy? Which probably justifies what he did to Tana in his head. But do you know what I mean? If you're ruthlessly in the game of business, why would you bring this attention to your the majority of your fans? Like, don't you think that's weird? Amara says, I still think it's weird that Tana did a stream with Cody and his now wife and she joked, called them their mo her mom and dad. Did his wife know about what went down? I don't know if his, I don't know if Kelsey knew. And that is also a question I would like to know. I don't know if Tana at that time was able to really recognize how vulnerable of a person she was. I mean, guys, look, if you don't have a relationship with your parents, 
you're fucking traumatized. Healthy people have healthy relationships with their parents. When kids and parents don't get along and you feel abandoned by your parents, that's trauma. That's why you see it manifest in so many streamers. That's why you see it in broken relationships. That's why they say like a two-parent household where the parents are together and healthy is good for the kids. But if you're in an abusive household, if you don't see proper relationships in front of you, of course you're gonna pick up bad habits. That's why if an 18-year-old wants to have sex with you and you're 25, you should probably not do it because they're probably fucking traumatized and now you're adding to that trauma. Even if having sex with you didn't traumatize them, you're contributing to the trauma. But see, this is asking too much of humans because humans could never be that thoughtful unless they're trained to be that thoughtful. You have to train yourself to be that thoughtful, okay? Empathy is a learned skill. A lot of the time, you have to learn how to embody somebody's experience. And what does a 25-year-old boy know about a 17-year-old girl's life, okay? And again, this is a society problem. Don't let society escape its responsibility because you want to put it on Cody Co. alone. Cody is a symptom of society. If you want to solve this problem, it's a societal issue dissonance that's coming from your audience in the name of defending you including their reaction to tana that's a that's a societal problem everyone blaming tana that's a societal problem against allegations that you're too cowardly to address and to be clear yeah i i hate this narrative it's so brain dead it's not that you're cowardly to like i agree with you morally i agree with d'angelo De morally it is shitty for a person not to to talk about it but also, even if he was innocent, it'd probably be better for him not to talk about it. And I don't know how you don't know that. But then that's the bubbles. That's why I say we live in bubbles. Because what's reasonable in D'Angelo's head, he's not embodying Cody's experience. He's not putting himself in Cody's shoes and thinking about Cody's life. He's thinking what I would do if I was Cody, but you're not thinking what you would do if you were actually Cody. Because if you were actually Cody and you were actually innocent or guilty, why would you talk about this? And the fact that you don't know that is so funny. But obviously, I agree with D'Angelo from a community perspective. I would love Cody to talk about this, especially if he's innocent. But because he's probably guilty, I would also like him to fess up and confess and own up to his responsibilities. But the nuance there is very specific. This is cowardice because you demonstrate it whenever there's controversy afoot. Tana's further claims make it sound like you're terrified. I said something about it online and it was starting to surface. And he texted me like, are we good? And was like, and like, mm. I said, yeah. And like, he was like, my wedding's coming up. You do have a history of making bad choices when you're terrified of people finding things out. Like your history of using slurs. Oh no. There's more clips than that, but the reason most people are blissfully unaware of them is because you posted your vague apology, not on Twitter, not on YouTube, but on Patreon. Just okay, can I be real with you though? Can I say something very controversial? Listen, you gotta learn from the white people about how they re avoid responsibility. This is how they get away with shit. They somewhat own up to it. He should have doubled down like some other streamers we know and just said, I say it, bitch, I say it. <laughs> It's not funny. It's really not funny. Cody is the epitome of white man. Despite acknowledging in your apology that the clips were surfacing on Twitter. This is one of many examples of your poor handling of controversy. Not many people know Ooh, that you- was it a poor handling or was it a good handling? Because not very many people know about it. D'Angelo, you are not business minded. You are community minded. See, he says not very many people know about it. You handled it badly. Nope, he handled it good for business. You've already lost fans over an eerily similar topic. You used to frequently feature and promote your college friend Colby Leachman in your videos until it came out that during your- True. This, this is bad. This is what made me question everything more than anything. This, the Colby thing, girl. For school days, Leachman's university put him on probation for, as a United States district judge would later put it, the non-consensual videotaping of a sex- I have a video about this. I did a live stream about it. And if you guys want to check it out, join members. I didn't make it an actual video because my tech completely fucked up and the sp I didn't have the spoons to re-record everything and get it done. But if you want, we went through this document. We talked about it. Um, it's bad. It's bad. I believe the victim. It's bad.
X-Act with another student, showing the video to other people, lying to the police about the video, and behaving horribly to that individual and at least yeah. one other woman. To make matters worse, the woman in the video also alleged that Leachman drugged her before the recording and that she hadn't actually- I 100% believe her. When I moved through this document, I was furious. No, I believe her. I think Cody's friends with a- for sure allegedly he consented to anything at all you had this man in your videos you were telling us to follow him on instagram and at some point you did wise up so he's no longer part of your content but he still seems like he's very much a part of your friend group mm -hmm. from the continued hangout since then to inviting him to your wedding just last year people are under the impression that you're best friends with someone who at best committed an illegal sex act and at worst is an alleged rape and no matter how many times people rediscover this information over the years, you refuse to say anything at all. You could clarify this, but you won't. But now your cowardice. He shouldn't. From a business perspective, you're insane to want him to cover the controversy. What an insane business take. But from a moral perspective, yeah. It's like, bro, what's going on? What is this? Has reached a new low. You've tried speaking and you've tried silence and now you're choosing censorship. On mm -hmm. your YouTube channel, where you've been pumping out content nearly every day now, I couldn't find a single comment on your last video about this situation. Not even- What do you mean? You're literally showing them. Cody likes teenage girls. Never thought I'd have to follow you. Wait, is D'Angelo being sarcastic? Am I too autistic for this? What do you mean? They're literally like every comment you're showing? Oh, YouTube, Instagram. Okay, I get it, hold on. Okay, so on Instagram, it's funny, I went to his YouTube recently and it's definitely all over his YouTube. He can't get rid of it. In Noel's, it's all over Noel's, it's all over Kelsey's. Okay, sorry, I was looking at the screen wrong. Instagram, there's a bunch of comments. On YouTube, there's not a bunch of comments. And obviously he would self -cens obviously he would censor the comments. Like, right, from a, he's hiding it. He knows it's going on. So just to be clear, Cody knows it's happening. He's absolutely trying to figure it out. He better lawyer the fuck up because he committed a crime. And also, like, I'm sure him and Kelsey are freaking out. Listen, I don't believe in mob rule or mob justice. So fuck all of you that want to crucify people. But I would love to know why this happened. Why did this even happen in the first place? What decisions is Cody or any of you making in your life that make this a reality for you? Because again, you want to know why 15-year-old minority kids end up in prison? Because they're born into societies that formed them and they're not taught introspection and then they make decisions. They still have to pay consequences, but maybe we can avoid this for the future. And I feel like no one wants to actually prevent this. They only want to go after people instead of asking, why did it even happen in the first? I want to know. Everyone else can focus on the bullshit. I want to know why it happened in the first place. And there's a reason it keeps happening. And there's a reason my parents are allowing their kids to date people that are legally adults and they're not. And I would like to stop that cycle from happening. Emmy said apologizing wouldn't really serve Cody's Bible bubble. I don't think D'Angelo's yes, but not Cody's. Why would he say anything at this point unless it makes sense for him until it makes sense for him? Exactly. That's the problem with bubbles. They don't realize like what works in your bubble won't work in his. They're not embodying Cody's experience because they feel like, why would I? He's the bad guy. If you want to know why people do things, you got to think about why they would do things for real, for real, and put yourself in their shoes and think, what would make, not me make this decision, but them make this decision. And I'm telling you right now, there are too many goddamn Cody's in the world for us not to address why they're doing it in the first place. And it can't just be everyone's a predator. Guys, too many parents, too many people, too many countries normalize this. Some people were mad at me in my original video because I was bringing up the age of consent in European countries. And I was just trying to give an example of bubble differences. And people are like, um, that's not the case in these countries in this way. And why are you bringing it up like you're normalizing it? I'm not normalizing it. It's already normal. Stupid. I'm not normalizing it. It's already normal. I'm saying, why is it normalized where it's legally on your books? What are you talking about? I don't have to normalize it. It's already normal. We have children getting married in the U.S. right now. And you can't just simplify it down to like, they're all predators, all of them. And predators are people who intentionally target prey 
and seek out to destroy, manipulate, and abuse. Predators aren't just people who are like, I'm doing the thing that my culture taught me was normal. That's not what a predator is, but there's definitely something fishy going on. And I would like to stop that cycle. Comparing that to the comment section on your Instagram, where every single comment I saw was about this, it's clear that you're heavily censoring your audience on YouTube. For sure. But surely you must have realized the limits by now, since people have just transferred the conversation over to your wife's channel. The fact yeah. that her comment section is overrun due to your decision to to stay silent about this should be all the proof you need that that decision was wrong. At this point, your silence and censorship are a response with disturbing implications. The only thing that I've seen this hidden portion of your audience asking for is the truth. So why aren't you telling it? And your silence isn't the only one that's bothering me either. All these Reddit threads, like if my name's on any thread, it's all getting deleted. I witnessed the heavy handed moderation of your subreddit in real time as I researched this video. I would refresh the page and posts would suddenly be unapproved by moderators mm. after racking up hundreds of comments, removed because they could quote, instigate drama, or more commonly just locked and or removed with no reason given whatsoever. I'm sure whoever is doing this thinks they're helping you, but you should probably tell them that they're making things look 10 times worse. No, D'Angelo's so wrong. You're so wrong on this, bro. Nah, business to business, you're so wrong on this. I disagree fully. I so disagree. It absolutely stops people from seeing the story. No, see, D'Angelo is so funny. He's like, hey, you're censoring it and people aren't seeing the story. So no one's going to find out about it. But also you censoring it makes you look like a bad guy. Not to the people who don't know what's happening. If the majority of people don't know Cody did this, then censoring things looks better. Because he's not trying to get you guys to like him. He's trying to get you guys silenced. Am I the only one who thinks this this is my thing though. I love why people do things. D'Angelo is so funny. Like, I like him. I do. I've warmed up to his content, but this kind of stuff makes me laugh because that's obviously like you haven't, that's, you can't have it both ways. Cody's obviously censoring it. So people who don't know, don't find out. But it's not just your moderators. It's your friends and fellow YouTubers too. Yeah. It's no coincidence that with the exception of the H3 podcast, I haven't seen a single channel over a million subscribers do so much as acknowledge that this situation exists. And I'm not talking about channels that never would have discussed something like this either. I mean the same channels that were rightfully calling out people like Dr. Disrespect for texting a minor, which are the same channels that are now completely ignoring a scenario with an even bigger creator being accused of doing so. Mm, I think the difference, and I think this is hard for people, I'll add the nuance since everybody's being weird. So I, okay, just like with peace and love, Dr. Disrespect was over 30. He was married. He had cheating scandals before. His audience is primarily kids. I think the difference is that Cody and Tana were both single at the time. They were in the same friend group. They were both content creators. Their audiences were their age. And Cody's audience has grown with him, so they're mostly adults. It's pretty different to a lot of people. And the same way it would be different if they were 17 and 19. 25, like I said, I hate to say this, like it's in media. It's not very common to see 35-year-olds with minors anymore, though that has been depicted in cinema as well. But cinema in particular, like it, it is more common as of like 10 years ago, 15 years ago to have somebody who's in their 20s with somebody in high school. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying why people might react differently to it. I, I get the, I'm just explaining because I feel like it's that, like D'Angelo's saying something, but I'm, I'm feeling like, oh, well, that's kind of missing from it. You know, Kay says he's not actually thinking about the situation. He's emoting because it's obvious why Cody will do what he does. Exactly. So I can't tell if I'm explaining things that are like, duh, or if like nobody knows this. So I'm here to give you the tools. Like, I'm just trying to say like, if Jerry Seinfeld could be in his 30s dating a high schooler, and all of the public saw it and nobody said anything. You think Cody Ko at 25 couldn't have had sex with Tana Mojo and nobody thought anything of it? Jerry Seinfeld was in his 30s dating a literal high schooler and nobody thought it was weird. And that was just, that was 30 years ago. So like, I think people need to recognize like this is a societal problem and not everybody's a predator, but these men are kind of fucking brain dead. I do think adult men that date very young people might be brain dead. And I know some of you are crying right now, but I'm so sorry. With peace and love, you gotta be IQ 45. What are you doing? Leave these young people alone, bro. 
Leave these young people alone. You can't say it's because the allegations are unconfirmed because the channels that I'm talking about discuss rumors all the time. And this video is all the proof you need that there's still plenty to discuss even without making definitive statements. The general public may not know about the situation, but I promise you anyone who's online enough to- Same with R. Kelly. Thank you. I completely forgot. And parents were involved with the R. Kelly thing. Okay. Oh, and what about- what about Drew Barrymore and never been kissed? It's a it's a high school teacher falling in love with a student and we're all supposed to think it's cute. Don't fuck with me right now. It's like, listen, I'm old. I've seen tons of movies. I read tons of books. I remember growing up with all these controversies. And I, I'm sorry. Like, I think sometimes Gen Z or something about this part of the internet completely knows nothing about people and is like, I can't believe this happened. Oh, I can't believe you live in such a sheltered, privileged bubble. You haven't seen this happen. I'm sorry that people don't grow up as fucked up around you. There's a lot of fucked up families out here doing fucked up things because it's learned behavior. Okay? It is fucked up learned behavior. And you got to understand, like, this is why things are happening. And this is not okay. I'm not justifying it. But you're not helping because you're not interested in actually figuring out why it's happening. And I think the solution, I'm a solution-based content creator, bro. I feel like there's there's major therapy that needs to happen for everybody involved. Okay, everybody involved. Serious, deep therapy. To run a YouTube channel does. The amount of people in this industry who like want to protect him and are like oh, talking right. to me in a way where it's like they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or even just friends like, but, but I love him. The community silence on this has been so staggering that people are now saying that commentary YouTube is a boys club, AKA a male dominated space that mistreats women while enabling and protecting men. And the truth is Cody, whether you're guilty or not, you are being enabled to ignore this and protected from having to respond as an act of misogyny towards Tana Mojo. We both know that on our side of commentary YouTube, any man can easily elevate himself by dunking on misogynists in his content and espousing a generally feminist viewpoint. True, and Cody definitely did that. Cody was one of the good ones because he would do that. Cody would make fun of Red Pillars, him and Noel, and they seemed like the good ones. Like, it's true that a lot of Cody and Noel's reason I started watching Cody and Noel is they seemed like the good ones. And I still kind of think Noel might be a good one because like what Cody does doesn't mean it's what Noel does, but it's really difficult because of course Cody and Noel have gone into business together. And so now a lot of the responsibility is falling on Noel to like cut ties with Cody, but also I believe in redemption. Remember, and I, I really hate to say this because it sounds like I'm making an excuse, but I am not. And you can be angry about it because you're traumatized. I don't know if you know, but marginalized and poor communities often are homophobic, racist, and often very lenient on these types of controversies and relationships because people don't know better. They're traumatized. Like, this is why I say when I see an age gap relationship, I'm like, what's your trauma? And everyone's like, um, I'm not traumatized because I'm 22 dating a 50 year old. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? And I know you keep calling me a bitch for calling it out, but I just feel like if you're 21 and you're dating a 45 year old, you might be traumatized. And I know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a bitch. This is very difficult. Now I believe in redemption and I believe people can get better because you make an attempt to face that trauma and get better. But how is that gonna happen if we don't have a pathway for it? Now Cody doesn't get the pathway yet because he hasn't owned up to the fault if he did do this. So you can't give him a path to redemption until he owns up to the fault. And, but you have to make a space for people own up to that fault because if they own up to the fault and you crucify them, well, they're dead and now they can't make amends. And this is what's so difficult about helping people. This is why conservatives don't want to help you. Don't you know this is why nobody wants to help you? Why would you own up to something you did that was wrong if you're basically, it's a death sentence? Why would you do that? Now, a purely, I think this is philosophy, a person has a very good relationship with their morals, so you have to have them in the first place. A person who understands what's closest to their joy and furthest from their evil is a person who knows you must take accountability based off your own morals for the wrongs that you've done. So you must own up to what you have done and adhere to your own consequences. And they have to be righteous consequences. They have to be righteous. They have to be correct, which is subjective. I don't believe in objective morality. You're not going to make me Okay, I'm not going to argue objective morality with you. Like you're an evolved animal on the planet probably. Okay, unless you believe in a God, which I don't. 
then like there is no objective morality. There's simply the relationship we're having with being closest to our joy and furthest from our evil. And I do think young people having sex with adults are probably closest to their evil and not their joy. Okay. And Cody Ko is closest to his evil and less from his joy when he's picking vulnerable people to have sex with. And in order to stop this cycle, we need to have a lot of conversations about why people end up in these situations. And what's scary is it's probably more than we can handle at the moment as a society, which is why a lot of us don't want to face it and we want to mob rule things, which I understand the instinct to do it. It's not going to help anything. (sighs) Discourse that I feel like growing up in a culture of the 90s was really weird because there were so many grooming behaviors and culture and television. It made it quite confusing for me as someone who was as a child. Exactly. It was confusing. And I grew up in it. And I've seen a lot of people do horrible things to people that they didn't even know were considered horrible because it was like what they were trained to do. And that's what I'm saying. We make the world. The world's a reflection of us as a whole. And I'm saying, how do we stop people from acting this way? Because what's worse is like, I don't know if you've ever done something and like most of us are good people, but if you've ever had to like fight your demons, it will feel like, what the hell? Am I even worthy of redemption? Yes. But you actually, you also have to understand why you're seeking it in the first place. That is not an easy task for a person. And look, I don't want to put my resources into the Cody Co's of the world, but I do want to put my resources into avoiding making the Cody Co's. How do we avoid making a Cody Co, right? Because that's, that's really difficult. Especially in this economy where you have a two-parent working household and nobody has time to spend time with their kids, your kids will end up Cody Co's. Your kids could end up the worst people on the planet because you're not spending any fucking time with them because you can't because groceries are $500 a week. Most people who become parents aren't prepared for it. And most people who raise the next generation do it poorly. And it shows because of how many times your kids are taking advantage of other people. But if that viewpoint turns to silence, the moment the situation is no longer cut and dry, then that viewpoint was a brand strategy, not a belief. The misogyny that we should be discussing is right here in the community. Yet the only thing I'm hearing is a- Cody Co is not in your community. Why do they think Cody Co is in their community? Am I missing something? D'Angelo, okay, I'm in the commentary community, but I'm not in this community. I am literally in the streamer commentary community, but I'm not in, you know, there's like 10 different bubbles. Why does D'Angelo think Cody Co is in the community? Like Tana and Cody aren't even in the same communities anymore in the same way. They're in different communities. Just because you're neighbors doesn't mean you're in the same community. Am I crazy? Like neighbors within neighbors are in different church communities. Why do they think they're in the same bubbles? Am I crazy? Purple says, I think he meant YouTube community. Well, that doesn't make, I don't, that doesn't make sense to my brain. Maybe I'm just being too like, category okay i will accept that as an answer but i don't get it but i accept it a bitter hollow silence one that you have just a reminder that piers morgan is also a youtuber now so i don't know if i would consider him in the community but he's not on tv anymore he's a youtuber so i don't know my brain's like i'm having a hard time with that explanation but okay the power to end i said it in the beginning i said it in the middle and i'll end with this One person's testimony does not give me the right to accuse you of doing anything illegal, but I can point out the facts. It's a fact that you and Tana were around each other during the years she specified, as seen in your uncomfortable collab videos, which are still online. It's a fact that Gabby Hanna has made claims that seem to corroborate Tana's allegations against you. And it's a fact that you are suppressing your audience's knowledge of these allegations by censoring your YouTube comment section. These things may not prove Tana's allegation, but you better believe that they contextualize them in a way that you need to address. And you still have every right to address this, even now. If you have a side of the story that we're missing, then tell it. If I have my facts wrong, say something. Nobody should ever be denied the right to tell the truth, no matter what. I'm sure we can all agree that everyone should have the right to speak the truth, but that's exactly why I couldn't just sit here and watch the whole world tell Tana that it doesn't apply to her. Regardless of the truth of the situation- I agree with this, I agree with this, okay? Tana deserves to tell her truth. I very strongly believe this, especially because I do believe it's true. But if it's true, I think you deserve to say it. So disappointed either way. That is all. Mm, Goodbye, Cody. True. I agree with this. Okay, I vibe with this. I agree with this. Like either way, it's disappointing. Super disappointing. I do agree. I believe Tana. I believe it's true. She should be able to speak on it. 
I think that's one of the issues. People want to be able to behave badly without people talking about it. And I think that's bullshit. If you behave badly, they get to tell their story. But also, you know, if you didn't want Tana to talk about it, you should have fucked Tana. Stupid. Okay. Like, I'm sorry. And I'd like, this is what I say. I'm happy to have complicated friends, but I got to talk about it. If you expect me not to talk about your bad behavior because we're friends, you're insane. If you expect me not to talk about your bad behavior because we're related, you're insane. Maybe don't do the bad thing. Now, will I pick and choose the right opportunities to talk about these things? Yes. I usually don't talk about things unless there's an active victim or there's somebody who needs to be protected. Personally, I draw the line, you know, obviously if it's, you know, the private community, I warn people like in my own life, if I see somebody with somebody, I'll be like, hey, don't engage with that person. But of course, people make their own decisions. You know, how many times do I try to warn you about these serial cheaters on YouTube and everyone's like, I can't fix them. Go ahead and try to fix them, girl. But like, he's going to cheat on you, girl. He's probably going to give you the herps, like avoid them. But you know, it is what it is. Okay. You can make your own decisions. I support Tana. In my original video, I obviously wanted more evidence and I still don't understand how people thought I was taking Cody's side in that. You're all brain dead if you did. I would never, ever support an adult taking advantage of a kid or a young person. I even said in that original video, if Tana was 18, it would still be wrong. If Even if Tana was 18, what Cody did is wrong. In my opinion, in my subjective opinion. Okay, bitch. Ultraviolet says, how did anyone get that from your last video? Because they're brain dead, bro. You're brain dead. I think you're traumatized. I think they're probably traumatized. It's a heated subject. They couldn't hear me. They don't understand the nuance of this channel either. But the fact that some people thought that, you're absolutely brain dead. Like in the nicest possible way. Fishy said, yeah, I went back to your video yesterday after I saw D'Angelo's video and those comments were so confused. Bro, how are they so confused? Like, what the fuck? And also, who in chat said even YouTubers thought I took Cody's side? What the fuck? Why would you think that? What did I say that made you think that? Is that true? I haven't seen any YouTubers talk about me in regards to that. Ultraviolet says saying something is normalized doesn't mean you're co-signing it. I think that's the problem. Is like, yeah, Caitlin said they heard her say that it's normal and took her as entire, that as the entire take and not just an explanation. Yeah, I think people forget like, because, you know, conservatives will do this with racism, right? Conservatives will say, um, it was never normal to own slaves like that. Like, people didn't like owning them. They just had to. No, it was normalized and they justified it. Like, you guys have to understand, bad behavior is normalized. It doesn't mean it's healthy. That's why when I was, like, in bad relationships, partners would say, oh, this is normal. And I'm like, I don't care if it's normal. It's not healthy. I don't care what's normal. I want to know what's healthy. And too many unhealthy behaviors are normalized in society. And so we don't think about it. And that's why I'm saying like, it's because it's normalized. Like somebody said, oh, why didn't Dr. Disrespect get canceled for cheating on his wife? Oh, look how many serial cheaters on the internet. Nobody gives a fuck. The fact that in your bubble, that would be enough to like cancel somebody. Cool. Obviously cheating is becoming so and probably too normalized. Where now we're talking about it with zero consequences. And this rumor that Japanese women are okay with cheating is not true. Like people will always make these videos from a TikTok as if TikTok is educational enough and say like, oh, do you know this whole culture of women don't mind if their husbands cheat on them? That is not true. That is not true. Why are you saying that? It's just because it's normalized that cheating is a thing doesn't mean people are okay with it. Like this misinformation we're constantly spreading that normal means healthy is bullshit. Lots of unhealthy behavior is normalized. Do we want to make it abnormal? Then we have to strive for something better and healthier. We have to know why people got there in the first place. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.